Hello everyone, welcome back to another Genshin Impact video. It's finally that time again, so today we're going to be talking about all the upcoming and speculated banners coming to Genshin Impact in 2.5 and beyond. We'll be covering which characters are officially going to be coming in patch 2.5 and 2.6, as well as speculating which characters are most likely going to get their reruns in the near future. While only four of these characters are 100% confirmed by MiHoYo to be coming in the next few patches, by looking at past banner trends, upcoming events, as well as possible future story beats, we can start to make educated guesses on which characters are going to be coming next. However, keep in mind that MiHoYo does love to throw curveballs at us, for example when they did their first double rerun banner with Albedo and Eula, and more recently like in 2.4 where they had four banners in one patch, so honestly anything's fair game, so try to make sure that you take anything past 2.6 with a grain of salt. However, even with that being said, it can be really helpful to have a little bit of foresight so you can make the best decisions for your account in regards to summoning. So if you do end up finding this video helpful at all, please feel free to leave me a like and comment down below with who you're planning on summoning for. I'm actually pretty curious to see who everyone's gunning for and who's still most popular. And if you want to see more Genshin Impact content from me, make sure to hit that subscribe button and click that notification bell. We're actually getting really close to 25,000 subscribers, so I just want to quickly say thank you for that. But with all that out of the way, let's get into the video. So it's finally happening. After an agonizing 7 months since her initial reveal in 2.0, Yai Miko is finally becoming a playable character. Besides characters like Zhongli, the Raiden Shogun, and Ayaka, Yai Miko easily has to be one of the most anticipated characters of all time. Also interestingly enough, she's the first new Electro character that we've gotten in the past 5 months, making her our 8th Electro character or 9th if you include the Electro Traveler. And although Electro as an element doesn't have the best reputation, since it pales in comparison damage-wise to Pyro, Cryo, and Hydro, it's still looking like Yaimiko's going to be a fairly powerful unit. It's looking more and more like Yaimiko's going to be a Quick Swap Burst DPS or Sub DPS. I'm leaning towards Quick Swap since her normal attacks do look beautiful, but I don't think they're going to be the main source of her damage. Instead, the focus of her kit seems to be centered around her elemental skill and her elemental burst. Her electro skill places up to three turrets onto the field that periodically strike enemies with lightning bolts. It's looking like this elemental skill is going to have a long duration and be able to hit enemies in an AoE, meaning that she's going to be able to provide consistent damage and electro application. Meanwhile, her elemental burst summons a giant fox spirit that turns into a giant lightning bolt, striking all enemies within range. Her elemental burst also consumes all elemental skill turrets on the field, and converts them into additional lightning strikes, meaning if you have all three of your totems on the field, that you'll be able to strike your enemies up to four separate times with her burst. Although it's not official as of recording, there are a lot of rumors going around that her elemental burst is going to have a very high cost, meaning that if you aren't running her with the proper teammates that you might struggle to get her burst up consistently. However, on the flip side, if she does end up having a very high energy cost burst, this probably means that it's going to have fairly high damage scaling, so hopefully at the end of the day it would still be worth it. It's also important to point out that they said in the 2.5 livestream that she's able to reset her skill cooldowns directly after using her burst, essentially allowing her to start funneling energy back into her burst as quickly as possible. The livestream also did mention that thanks to a passive, her elemental skill will get a little bit of a damage increase based off of her total elemental mastery, however overall this kind of seems like a nice perk if you manage to get some EM substats, but the majority of her kit will benefit more from attack stats, so just try to think of the EM as an additional perk. As for whether or not you should summon for her, that's a little bit of a tricky question considering that the Raiden Shogun will be coming right after her, who has been proven to be one of the best characters in Genshin Impact to date. Not to mention the current late game has been very focused around healing, and Kokomi is also going to be up for grabs very soon. I personally think that Yaimiko is going to be a great pick for late game players, but not for new players, since you will have to have completed the grand majority of the story up till now in order to level her up past a certain level. But if you still have questions about Yaimiko and want a more in-depth look at her, I will be doing an Honesty Zero review of her as soon as she comes out, so make sure to stick around if you don't want to miss it. Alright, and right after Yaimiko, we're finally going to be seeing the very first reruns of the Raiden Shogun and Kokomi. Although the Raiden Shogun did get off to a little bit of a shaky start in 2.1, as the game progressed and people spent more time with her, the community started to realize that she's actually one of the best characters in the game. While she might not be as universal as a character like Kazuha, if placed into the proper teams you'll see a huge boost in performance. This is because she's able to provide constant off field damage, buff your entire team's elemental bursts based off of their energy cost requirements, provide decent damage with her burst at C0, and battery her entire team whenever she hits enemies with her elemental burst. She also has access to an amazing signature weapon, the Engulfing Lightning, and even free-to-play players have access to the catch, which at max refinements is actually one of her best weapons. And if you unlock her C2, she also becomes one of the best damage dealers in Genshin Impact, essentially giving you the value of a C6 character, while only needing to pull 3 copies as opposed to 7, making her 
were extremely valuable to free-to-play players and whales alike. However, I do think that it's important to mention that while she is a fairly flexible character, if you main characters like Ganyu, Hu Tao, and sometimes even Ayaka, she won't actually provide that much synergy, and you're probably better off pairing her up with other teammates such as Yula, in a taser team focused around electro damage, in a hyper carry team with Kazuha, Bennett, and Sara, or even in the very popular and free-to-play friendly Raiden National team. However, if me singing her praises wasn't enough to convince you whether or not you should summon for her, I did recently post a full in-depth Is Raiden Shogun Worth It video, which I'll make sure to leave a link up above and down below for you guys. However, as I mentioned earlier, the Raiden Shogun isn't the only one that you need to be taking into consideration, and that's because the Sanga no Miya Kokumi banner is going to be up at the exact same time. Despite her initial banner being the worst performing of all time, and the fact that the general community was very disappointed in her performance, as time has progressed she's actually proven to be a fairly solid unit. I think that when Kokumi first released, a lot of people didn't see where her potential lied. In fact, thinking back, I was actually one of the only channels that reviewed her in a slightly positive light. Like many, I was disappointed in her total damage output, but even way back then I saw that she had a lot of potential as a driver, and of course was arguably one of the best healers in Genshin Impact. Was she top tier upon her release? Definitely not. But now that she has access to a new best in slot artifact set, the Ocean Hued Clam, as well as Mihoyo constantly adding in enemies that bypass shields, Kokumi has proven over time that she does have use within the meta. Kokumi currently shines most in two different types of team comps, one being a replacement for Diona or Mona in a freeze comp, allowing you to slot in two separate damage dealers such as Ganyu and Ayaka, or in a taser comp where she's used as a driver in order to deal a lot of electro charge damage. However, more recently there has been a big boost in popularity to a team called Sukokumon, where you use Sucrose as your main driver, and Kokumi, Fischl, and Shangling skills in order to trigger multiple elemental reactions with their quote-unquote Pokemon. I personally do not have a lot of experience with this team, but just by watching other people's Spiral Abyss clears, it's very obvious that this team is very viable. And if you're curious to learn how to utilize these teams, I recommend checking out either Tenten's video or Meowray's video, because this team is actually very very technical and you have to be inputting the right rotations in order to maximize on your damage. And honestly, these two can explain it much better than I ever could. But honestly, even outside of the meta, Kokomi is just a very comfortable character to play, since she's able to provide both off-field and on-field healing, and constant hydro application. And yes, yes, her damage output is 100% gimped by the fact that she can't crit, however, since you're not focusing on crit stats, it actually becomes much easier to build her. And with the Ocean Hued Clam set, you're actually dealing a fair amount of damage. And one last point, she's actually extremely free-to-play friendly, since you don't really need her signature weapon in order for her to be good. You can honestly just slap on the craftable prototype Amber if you want more healing and energy regeneration, or if you just want to provide a big attack buff to your teammates, you can always equip her with the Thrilling Tales of Dragon Slayers. So all in all, if you were worried about getting her, you don't really need to be, because she's much better than people initially thought. It really just depends on whether or not you think she's going to be a good fit for your account. Alright, and sadly, there are no new 4-star characters coming in patch 2.5, so that about covers it. However, we still have a lot to talk about in regards to patch 2.6. Now, there's actually only one character that we know is officially coming in patch 2.6, and that's Kamisato Ayato. Yes, that's right, Ayaka's brother is finally coming to the game. We've actually known about this character for quite a while, mainly because Ayaka and Toma always bring him up. But besides the fact that he is the head of the Kamisato clan, there really isn't much information on him yet. Besides his appearance, we do know that he is a Hydro user, and from the weapon in his hand, we know that he's going to be able to use a Hydro sword. However, the real question is whether or not he's naturally a sword user, or if he's similar to characters like the Raiden Shogun or Child who can transform their weapons. I think that the general consensus is that most people want him to be a main DPS, because currently we don't really have any. We do have Child who is actually pretty solid, however, in all honesty, he feels more like a driver than an actual main DPS. Since especially at lower constellations, his main focus is applying Hydro to his enemies, so that the rest of his teammates can proc elemental reactions. And even though Mona and Xingxiu can both deal a decent amount of damage, they're typically not thought of or ran as main DPSs. And honestly, the same goes for Kokumi. So hopefully if we're lucky, Ayato will deliver on a whole new gameplay style for the Hydro element. But of course that means that we're gonna have to wait until 2.6 in order to find out. Okay, and with all that being said, I'm guessing that you're all itching to know who's most likely going to be coming as the rerun banners in 2.6. Now like I said at the beginning of the video, these are not confirmed as of yet, but based off of previous banners, these are the three that I think are the most likely. Let's go ahead and start with the character that I think is actually going to get her very first rerun, Kamisato Ayaka. Yes, that's right, I do think that Kamisato Kamisato Ayaka is going to be getting her first rerun alongside her brother. Well, maybe not right alongside, but definitely within the same patch. This is not only because it's been 7 months since her initial release, but primarily because
because since they're adding Ayato in the game, I think that they're going to introduce him through Ayaka. Or at the very least, she'll be present during his storyline. MiHoYo has been making it a point to bring back characters whenever they fit the story needs. For example, in patch 2.4, all of the characters on Raid Up made an appearance in the story, and in 2.5, Yai, Miko, Raiden Shogun, and Kokomi all seem to be taking center stage, which is why I think it's very likely to see these siblings ran together. However, I am hoping that she doesn't take away the spotlight from her brother. Since her initial release in patch 2.0, she's actually been touted as one of the strongest characters in Genshin Impact. While she doesn't offer much in terms of support, if you're looking for a main DPS or a sub-DPS burst character, then Ayaka's definitely your girl. Not only is she able to infuse her own attacks with Cryo, but her elemental skill hits like a truck, and her elemental burst hits like a freight train, dealing absolutely massive amounts of Cryo damage within a very short period of time. In fact, she's one of the only characters that's considered to be on par with Ganyu, at least in terms of total damage output. However, unlike Ganyu who can easily be paired into both freeze and melt comps, while Ayaka technically technically can be in a melt comp, she only truly excels within freeze, as she tends to rely on hydro application in order to lock enemies in place before using her burst. However, even with that said, when she's good, she's good, and an Ayaka freeze comp is probably the strongest freeze comp available. And with the recent addition of Shenhe in order to boost her damage, Ayaka has been pushed even closer to the top of the meta, and honestly I don't see her going anywhere anytime soon. It's also important to note that while she is extremely powerful with constellations, her kit still feels completely at C0. And since she has access to the free-to-play weapon the Amanomi Kakuyuchi, I would also say that she's pretty free-to-play friendly. And at the same time, if you are willing to summon for her weapon the Miss Splitter Reforged, you're sure to see a huge spike in damage, making her a character that's pretty safe to invest into. I do have a C0 Ayaka showcase up on my channel, so I'll make sure to leave a link both above and down below. Just keep in mind that it is an older video and I've gotten a lot better at making videos since then, so if you want to increase the playback speed, I won't be offended. However, all of the information in that video Video is still pretty accurate. Alright, and next up, and this might be a surprise to most players, but I actually think that Venti is going to get a rerun in 2.6. Okay, now stick with me for a second, because I know a lot of you might be furiously typing, what about Kazuha? And we'll get to him in just a second. But the main reason that I think that we're going to get a Venti rerun in patch 2.6, because it's looking like patch 2.6 is going to fall on the Windbloom Festival. Many players will already know about the Windbloom Festival, but for newer players, it's essentially the biggest festival within Mondstadt. This entire festival is centered around the animal Archon Barbados, so I think that it's very highly likely that Venti will be getting his rerun banner then. Last year, the Windbloom Festival fell around mid-March, and this year it's looking like it's going to fall between mid-March and late March. It really just depends on how the six-week patch cycle works out. Probably to no one's surprise, Venti is one of the most popular characters in Genshin Impact. Not only is he the Enemo Archon, but he's also arguably the best crowd controller in the game. If you're ever fighting a whole lot of smaller enemies, then Venti's definitely going to be your best pick, launching enemies into the air with his elemental skill, and sucking them into his vortex of death using his burst. However, there is a slight problem with Venti nowadays, and it really boils down to two separate things. One being that there are more and more heavy enemies and bosses that Venti really doesn't pair that well up against. His burst is the star of his kit, but if an enemy can't get sucked up inside of it or can move outside of it quickly, then unfortunately it isn't really relevant to that content. The second big issue is that he has competition. In terms of 4 stars, we do have Sucrose who is a pretty good option, but it's really Kazuha that really gives him a run for his money. This is because Kazuha is good in just about every situation, and while he might not provide as much crowd control, it's usually enough to get by, and his burst hits in such a large AoE that you're never going to miss your enemy even if it's something huge like a boss. For these reasons, Venti hasn't been nearly as popular as he was in the very beginning of Genshin Impact. However, whenever conditions are in his favor, he's definitely the top pick, absolutely obliterating anything that gets sucked into his vortex. Okay, and with that, we're going to talk about the last character I think has a strong chance of being reintroduced in 2.6. That's right, it's Kazuha. Now, I know that a lot of people probably won't think that Kazuha and Venti will be run together, and to an extent, I do agree with you. I really doubt that these two characters will be placed right next to each other, but I do think that they could be placed within the same patch. One could be on the first half of the patch, and one could be on the second half. But I really think it comes down to whether or not MiHoYo will run four banners in one patch. 2.4 has shown us that it's possible, but it's just as likely that we'll only get three, and one of these characters that I mentioned will be pushed back to 2.7. However, I know that a lot of people have been desperately waiting for Kazuha, especially since he hasn't had a rerun banner since 1.6, making him the current title holder of the longest to go without a rerun. And since I do believe that Kazuha and Ayato are going to have pretty good synergy, 
synergy, mainly because Kazuha is good with everyone, I think that the odds are in our favor. Kazuha has almost single-handedly bent the entire meta around him. So long as you're trying to deal pyro, hydro, electro, or cryo damage, 9 times out of 10 you're going to want to run Kazuha on that team. This is because any time that he swirls one of these elements, he's able to give them a monumental elemental damage bonus that directly scales off of his elemental mastery. And since he can swirl up to two elements back to back, you can essentially increase all of the reaction damage for those two elements, leading to some of the craziest increases to team damage that we've ever seen. On top of this, he's the second best crowd controller in the game, and his elemental burst covers such a large range that he's actually good at dealing with both small enemies and bosses alike. He also feels fairly complete at C0, and is very free to play friendly considering that you can use the Iron Sting on him in order to maximize his EM buffs. However, his constellations are also extremely good, so if you do decide to go for them, you should definitely be thinking about C1 and C2. C1 because it resets the cooldown on his skill after using his elemental burst, allowing you to use his elemental skill, then his burst, and then back to his skill. And his C2 is probably his most valuable constellation, giving your party an extra 200 elemental mastery so long as they're within the field of his burst. This is essentially what Sucrose can already do for you, but now it's all in one character. This leads to much bigger reaction damage, and easily makes him the single best reaction booster in the game. And if you're willing to whale him all the way to C6, his overall damage is increased even further based off of his elemental mastery, and he's also able to infuse his sword with a Nemo, essentially making him a top tier support and main DPS at the same time. If I'm going to be frank, Kazuha is account changing. Whether you have him at C0 or C2 or above, this is why you'll see many older players saying that they greatly regret skipping him in the first place. Many people were just saying that he was a 5 star Sucrose, or that if you had Sucrose or Venti that you definitely didn't need him, but honestly Kazuha is in a league of his own, so if you don't already have him, I definitely recommend saving up for him. Alright, and that about does it for my thoughts on 2.6. Like I said, these reruns are not confirmed, but I do think that they are the most likely based on what we currently know. Mihoyo could throw a curveball at us by instead running a character like Klee or Yoimiya, or heaven forbid another child rerun, but something tells me that they're not going to come out until summer, but I'm sure we'll start getting a better picture of things once 2.5 starts to come to an end. But that's all for today's video, so I really hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, or if you found it helpful at all, please feel free to leave me a like and comment down below. It does help me boost into the YouTube algorithm, and I'd greatly appreciate it. And if you want to help me reach 25,000 subscribers, if you aren't already subscribed, please feel free to hit that subscribe button. I'd love to have you along for the ride. But that's all for now, so until next time, best wishes. Bye.